if you get one to come in close, it's a pretty dramatic moment. It's really something to see a big elk at close quarters. That's what we're hoping for here. You just know when the moment's right. Okay, we've dropped down into the uh, basin. We're gonna set up on this ridge. Just check 10 yards in front of us. He's gonna drop back and try to call him over. He's walking our feet in that direction. You're good. You could probably walk up there if you want to do it. You see him right there. There's two balls 150 yards across from us. That one that just bugles, the six by seven that we came down to see. He's 200 yards up the hill. What's gonna happen is that these two balls are gonna go, go check each other out. They don't care about us. They're both heading towards each other. If they start getting into each other, I'm gonna see if we can get up on them so we get ready to move if it happens. quite a bit bigger than the other one. spot. So it was a clean mess, but it went right underneath his forelegs. It was perfect. So that was the bigger one. It was the big one, yeah. Yeah. He's quite a bit bigger than the other one. I'm Glenn Everly. Uh, my company is Everly Stock. A pretty broad-based outdoor gear company. We love uh, exploring new ideas and really trying to make practical products for hunters. Most people know Glenn Everly for his famous Everly Stock backpacks, but the name Everly Stock has a very unique origin. As an Olympic athlete himself, Glenn invented a lightweight gun stock for biathletes to use in the biathlon. In fact, so light it prompted the Olympic Committee to create a threshold and institute strict weight standards for future Olympic athletes to compete with. Glenn Everly changed the history for this grueling Olympic shooting sport and at the time gave a significant advantage to the U.S. biathlon team. Everly stocks a lot smaller than a lot of people think that it is and uh, so I'm, that means that I'm a busy fellow. I'm trying to get out every year just because it sort of is the, it's the one thing that if I'm not doing by the time the winter comes around if I've missed a season of elk hunting I just feel like I really missed something special so. Here's a butterfly. 
Eyes going back. I got a bowl. Same over there. Yep. Well, I think we got a good enough wind. We better just get up there and get in front of them and, and uh, find a good place. And let's go check them out. I'm excited. Not every time you go into the forest or the field are you going to bring back uh, game. That doesn't bother me, that's part of the deal. I, I like to go hunt hard, I like to see the animals. We've seen at least three or four bulls in the next meadow over there. A couple of good shooters. If I don't get one, I'm not gonna feel bad about it. I don't feel like I'm the lesser person and it's really no big deal. It's a bit of a disappointment at times, but but the truth is, it's kind of the reverse. If I get something, I feel very fortunate. That's one of the shooters. Oh, there's another one right behind the tree right from you. This is just a really special place to get to come. It's different from where I usually hunt and where I live. We're just gonna hug in this tree right here. See, see what happens. I've rarely been in a place where you can see so much game and know. I think the uh, Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation does some great things and is a wonderful organization. The fact that hunters do good things in this country to make elk habitat and wild game habitat in general better and to make the animals more prolific. People need to know that an organization does something like that, that, uh, that it's positive and, and uh, we all need to say that it's positive and explain why hunting is actually a means to improving the natural habitat of this country.
was a, as good a play as we had. No, I mean, honestly, getting down here, 200 yards from him, and this, with this wind, not disturbing him. We did all right. right at 20 yards and I just was like it wasn't, wasn't the shot I wanted 
but I, I just was really careful with it and I felt real steady so I just said well and I and you know honestly I didn't I he was staring right at me 20 yards for I don't know how long the better part of 20 seconds between the two steps that he took the two times he stopped so um, I just I just knew he wasn't gonna stay there so so we got the job done though and that's pretty pretty neat I think every wild animal has is beautiful. I appreciate small elk when I see them, cows and calves. It's all it's fun to see all those things. When you see a big bull in the field, it's it's marvelous. Um, if one comes in close enough for you to shoot him. And that's great. The truth is, younger ones taste better. Um, the bull I shot this year is a perfect balance of both. He's got a nice rack, but he's a young bull, and he's going to be a, in our freezer all winter and feed my family. And I'm really pleased with that. I never have focused on the size of the antlers personally. I, I don't know how to measure them, and really don't care. Maybe someday I'll shoot a bigger one. Maybe not, but. That hunt will be special in its own way, and the elk will mean something in its own way, but the size of his antlers are just part of the story. Mm -hmm.